y'all uh back with another one it's this is nothing crazy just letting y'all know and just pass on the information that definitely uh helped me out and i wish i had a youtube video on it it would have been nice tried to research it online and that is axle rust with this gm design for the brackets that hold the axle onto the leaf now this is a common thing with these trucks just because the way that this bracket is designed this mounting plate has no drainage so regardless of what you do anytime water gets in it it's going to sit and pool and rust away at your axle especially if you live down um i want to say um up north kind of like uh where you're dealing with salt you're dealing with snow you're dealing with a lot of moisture rain the elements but if you're living in texas arizona you guys aren't really going to have to worry about this that much because th those states are great for patina and preservation so other than that the issue is is when it does rot away and rust away to a certain extent you will start to develop a pinhole where it actually made it through to the inner axle tube now that's going to cause you to lose axle fluid um gear fluid out of the differential from the tube itself now i dropped my truck off and took it somewhere to get it uh and i figured okay clean it up wire wheel it off put some tack welds in that spot done deal don't have to worry about it but didn't happen that way. Um, the guy was really busy, so I had to get the truck back because once again, this is my daily driver. So I had to take matters into my own hands and figure it out. And that's when I got the idea of the JB Weld and I wasn't too sure, did it. Long story short, it worked. You're gonna see it. Now going back to the design, since I have the Caltrax, I'm not sure if this is why Calvert designed it this way. I really think that's probably why they did it. But there is multiple holes in the bracket for water to drain out that just so happens to get in there and try to pool. So you won't have to worry about this with this design because the holes are there. The only other way I could think of is if maybe the holes got blocked off somehow, but that's something that you can just, you know, poke some dirt out, you're back in business. So at this point, you'll see it, whether you have a GMT 400 or not, this can definitely work for you and you'll be good to go on the cheap and you're definitely still safe because this is not holding a structural area of the axle. This is the surrounding of that area. So you'll be good to go. Um, the axle tube did have a slight pinhole um, and it was leaking through and it was leaking through kind of bad. So uh, to combat that, um, I was gonna get it welded. I had it over, um, had a guy that's done some stuff for me before, but something came up with him. I had to go get my truck. Um, and I just took matters in my own hands and I used some JB Weld. So uh, put the JB Weld on here. As you can see, the axle, uh, that tire's on the ground. This one's up to get the fluid to flow down to that end so this end can be dry. So while this end is dry, then I'm able to clean it up, wire wheel it, knock off the rust, spray it down with some acetone, brake clean, wipe it down, um, and then hit it with the JB Weld. So it's been sitting in this position for almost 24 hours, I'm like a couple hours shy. So it is set. This side is already done um, uh, as far as what we're doing. Uh, like you can see, this is still dry from when I wiped it off, the bracket for the Caltrack and to hold the uh, rear axle in place. So when you look at this side, not only do you see uh, those drips of water where I'm slowly losing axle fluid, gear fluid, but you see that this one is still wet and uh, dripping and whatnot. So um, but I'll take these bolts out so that I can get to the axle itself and uh, get the repair in it.
here that goes to show how much fluid gets out and on top of that how the dirt from the road just sticks to it Okay, so now I got it off and uh, you can kind of get a better look at the damage that the old brackets, the old mounting plates did to this. So a lot of this material here is like dead and I can just pretty much just pluck it off. So I'm gonna take uh, my wire wheel and get this here, um, clean it up to the best of my ability and that will actually expose where the leak is. and. Um, once that happens, then I can use the JB Weld, put it in, um, and I'll have to keep the axle on a tilt to the driver's side, I'm sorry, the passenger side, so that the fluid stays away from the driver while the JB Weld uh, cures and does its thing. Face shield, people, face shield. You know, it's grinding me up. I'm good. Okay, so y'all can see the difference now. Got it all cleaned off, uh, went to town with my good old wire wheel. Um, and this style wire wheel is definitely more aggressive than the cup. I mean, the cup gets the job done too, it gets, for the most part, but that one does damage. So, I'm gonna try to see if we can focus here. That pinhole right there, that's the culprit. That is where the uh, JB Weld's gonna go into. So, um, again, uh, I was overthinking it, trying to get somebody to uh, weld that hole, which I could do, and they could have done more repair on the rear, but for now, just to stop the leak, until I either A, get a new rear, um, or B, um, get repairs done to reinforce. Um, I'll figure out what road I'm going, but as of right now, I'm just closing this thing up, stopping the leak, and keeping it pushing. So, um, yep, that's gonna be it. I don't see any other one right now, except for that one. Even going on this side, it just seems to be here. But it's insane because you can see the amount of material that gets removed over time from these style uh, mounting plates actually holding water in place. It's, it's nuts. But I guess the good part when it comes to um, me using the JB Weld uh, and with the Caltrack design, the Caltrack design only rides here where you can see a slight mark and here this intersection does not make contact with the actual uh bracket so um it only rides on those sides so structurally it's not like the bracket is bolting up to like a weak spot or something it's um only onto the spots that actually still have significant uh metal left and not any metal loss okay so here's a jb weld um i got the one that uh actually does take the the longer time to cure i can't remember how long it is i think it's from a certain amount of hours up to 24 something like that but um i just got that one because i wasn't sure if the other one that takes less time uh, wasn't as strong i honestly don't know i just want my gut so one to one mix uh just gotta take this and I'm just gonna mix it up until it gets all the same color. And then once that's done, apply it, let it sit. Okay, so here it is, all mixed up, one color. It's kind of like a really dark gray. Um, so now, just time to get up under there, apply it, um, and let it sit. All right, let's get to it. Hit it both sides. Oh, it's about to follow me. 
Yeah. Spread this across and get it to lay as flat as I can. Does it have to be? Not really. I just want to make sure I get it in and especially where it needs to be. So it's going to be the thickest part is me definitely getting it where it needs to be. I'm gonna throw some more and some extra spots just because, I mean, I have the uh, leftover, so, I mean, I might as well. So this here should definitely do the job. Um, I got it, I took it uh, further than I need to, um, just because I had the extra, just put it over the parts that were still thin and definitely got the uh, pinpoint part that was a problem. So uh, now only thing left to do is to uh, pretty much just let the car sit. I'll come back around to it uh, same time tomorrow, um, maybe a little earlier, just to uh, put a coat of paint on it and um that should be it uh it worked for that side and that side's still fine um no issues no leaks uh slap some paint on it and i mean it's good to go for now so and this will get me by my current power level anyway i mean i know mm, some of you guys that's watching this obviously aren't going to be all freaking racers or whatever or you know hot riders but even if just your uh usual routine maintenance you want to stop that leak um this is how you can do it um so yeah, so that's pretty much it. So now what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm going to actually take this jack stand, put it closer to the outside, or probably all the way on the outside, and take this jack stand completely out. And I'm gonna drop the truck, and once I do that, then that's gonna make the axle tilt toward the passenger side, so that way uh, the oil will go to that side and not compromise the JB Weld. So that's where you can get a look. I mean, this was how much was just sitting in there and not including the amount that dripped out. But uh, yeah, this is pretty bad. So, I mean, I already cleaned up the hardware, got all of the grease and grime off. Just got to clean up this uh, mountain plate and uh, start getting ready to bolt it back on. All right, so I already started tightening these down. I used the gun, but um, this thing is amazing, man. The AC Delco. And it was only like a hundred bucks on Amazon. I mean, I, I didn't want to go any cheaper than that because at that point you're probably sacrificing quality. But um, they're already close to torque. So I set it to hundred foot pounds and um, you're gonna heal it almost like a backup uh, alarm on a car. It's gonna beat more the closer you get. much oh that's already at 100 probably past 100 oh yeah Woo! all right so there it is finished product um definitely get me by for a while um it's uh already dry cured i mean obviously it's the next day um and uh, we're good to go.